My name is Lacey Wilson. Today is the 7th of January, 2022, and I'm here interviewing Mayor of Kernersville, Dawn Morgan, uh, about her journey into politics and her journey as a politician here in Kernersville in North Carolina. Thank you again for participating in this project. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here talking with you today, Lacey. I really appreciate it. This is going to be exciting. So um, to my understanding, your journey really starts, well, you were a, a lawyer first, an attorney? It, um, it, yes. Yes. So um, that's, that's kind of the beginning I w we can think about as your journey into politics, perhaps, as well as learning the law and that kind of thing. Uh, did you ever think you would actually run at any point during that, just during the learning por portion in law school? No, um, I, um, I went to Wake Forest University mm -hmm. School of Law. Mm -hmm. And so I went to work at a large law firm in Winston-Salem, and I was looking for ways to become involved in the community. Mm -hmm. And so my husband and I moved to Kernersville from Winston-Salem, the apartment we were renting while I was in law school and we um, rented a house in Kernersville. And so I started volunteering with the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And I was really interested in their business ambassadors where you would go out and talk to the local businesses and meet new business people in the community. But that wouldn't fit in my work schedule as mm -hmm. an attorney, a young attorney. Sure. No children, young attorney, young professional in Winston-Salem. For sure. And um, so what I chose to do was the um, Business After Hours Committee. Mm -hmm. And so we had uh, two shifts where you would greet people and make name tags as they came into the event. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I did. I um, was a volunteer with the Chamber of Commerce and I wrote name tags for people. So <laughs> I ended up meeting a lot of people mm -hmm. that way. And um, one of my friends from law school had served for a long time on the Kernersville Planning Board. Mm -hmm. And uh, my area of practice involved commercial real estate. And mm -hmm. she said, Dawn, you need to apply for this. You'll love it. Mm -hmm. So I applied and I was not chosen. <laughs> so. The first time um, I ever saw my name in a letter to the editor mm -hmm. in the newspaper was because I had not been appointed to the planning board. And uh, they were complaining that, why are you, the letter writer was complaining, why are you appointing the same people mm -hmm. who are known in politics and not giving any new people a chance? Mm -hmm. This Mr. Morgan, who's a lawyer. <laughs> Mr. Would be, Morgan. Yes, would be an excellent <laughs> addition to the planning board. So about six months later, uh, they, uh, they did more appointments to the planning board and myself and two others who were new um, to the planning board were appointed. And so that's where I really got my political experience in Kernersville mm -hmm. was my appointment to the Kernersville planning board. Um, and my first meeting was um, February 1997. What an interesting way to just sort of start. Like you've been in Kernersville for under a year at that point, and you started volunteering. For about three years. For about three years. Well, I volunteered after, I volunteered quite, I hadn't been here very long before I started volunteering. Right. Before I was, so I moved to Kernersville in uh, 1994, mm -hmm. and I was appointed to the planning board in 1997. Gotcha. So I've been in Kernersville before I was appointed. Okay. I was thinking about the volunteering thing. What a cool way to sort of get to know Kernersville. And then as the process began and you um, began to um, start on the planning board that three years in. Oh, yes. I, and I jumped right in. Mm -hmm. What was interesting is our house that we rented mm -hmm. was, um, was close to downtown. And so we walked to the Spring Folly that May. And so I went to a very early Spring Folly. I was involved in the things in the community, mm -hmm. really from 1994 when we moved here mm -hmm. um, on. From so I've beginning. seen quite a bit of transition in Kernersville. Sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so what do you remember about being on the planning board, your first start, your first meeting was in 1997? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. which was really interesting in a lot of ways in that, um, so per, in my personal life as, as a woman in politics, mm -hmm. I was, um, moving from being a young professional to being uh, a young mom. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started the, with the planning board, I was actually pregnant with my first child. And so um, I remember going to a um, community meeting in May of 1997, mm -hmm. which was kind of this visioning process called Kernersville 2020. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've talked about being at that meeting a lot, but not but until this interview, not the fact that I was expecting my first child. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of trying to let you know some of the things that have gone on with me sure. being a female in politics that, you know, you don't really share with the world because you're you're concentrating on being effective and sure. being a leader and that sort of thing. But it's that kind of juggling the responsibilities mm -hmm. of what it means to be a woman mm -hmm. and what it means to be involved in your community mm -hmm. and to serve. So. But I was pregnant with um, with John Morgan, my um, <laughs> oldest, and I remember being at that meeting thinking, 
wow, if we get half of this, this accomplished by the time he graduates from high school, we'll have really done something because it was called uh, Kernersville 2020. Mm -hmm. And so it was a 20, uh, it was a, a 20 year plan sure. for the community that mm -hmm. we were starting the process in 1997. And so John was born that July. Mm -hmm. I was still serving on the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, so as an alderman, as the mayor, I've seen a lot of implementation of this plan. We really did accomplish quite a bit before John graduated from high school. So when he graduated and got ready for graduation, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about how the community had changed as well. That's an exciting retrospective just to think about in terms of the time difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if someone was new to what a planning board does, how would you describe it to them? Okay, the planning board is an advisory board. Mm -hmm. they, they hold a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Um, the members are appointed by the Kernsel Board of Aldermen, mm -hmm. or if you're in another community, whatever your governing body is, whether it's your city council or, or um, village council or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they are an appointed body, but you hold public hearings. Mm -hmm. You hold public hearings on zoning cases. Mm -hmm. And so people can come and talk about how they support a proposed development or they oppose a development. Mm -hmm. And then the planning board takes a vote and that's a recommendation to the Board of Aldermen for the legislative action. Mm -hmm. And they can work on things like, well, we want to put some conditions on development, like maybe the dumpster needs to be on the backside or it needs to have certain um, uh, road work done mm -hmm. to support the business or whatever the um, arguments are that the um, petitioner, the person requesting the rezoning has, mm -hmm. and then listening to the concerns of the residents. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of experience by the time I ever ran for office mm -hmm. of, about the public hearing process and, and hearing, getting emails and phone calls and people stopping me on the street about um, their opinions about a zoning case. So I had had a lot of experience by the time I, I ran mm -hmm. because I had served in that capacity for four and a half years. Absolutely. But, um, we also looked at the land use plans, which is your long-term plan about what you want the neighbor, the area to develop as, mm -hmm. like where you want to have certain businesses, where there, this is an area you see as residential, this is an area you see as industrial development, co commercial, and the and the kind of transitions between the uses so that your community makes sense. Mm -hmm. This is how you avoid having you know factory next to a school. Sure, as you plan in advance, and mm -hmm. you say, well, this is where we're going to have schools and residential. This is where we're going to have industrial mm -hmm. and kind of on a side note we actually ran into a conflict later on mm -hmm. in kernersville where a school decided they were interested in land we had designated for industrial i mean <laughs> we worked through all that but mm -hmm. so having a land use plan is um is important mm -hmm. the school got turned down and what is there now is um, the amazon distribution center mm -hmm. Well, which is a sentence that wouldn't have really made sense in like 1997 or early 2000s that Amazon would have gone so far into being, being a space like this. Right. Amazon, when it first started, was a book, you know, in Just 1997 books. was a bookstore. Just a bookstore. So, you know, um, I, I just remember all the excitement, you know, with having children and the Harry Potter releases mm -hmm. and that Amazon was such a big part of getting that next um, Harry Potter release, you know, Absolutely. those magic boxes came, <laughs> but, but Amazon was a bookstore when they first started. Mm -hmm. Certainly wasn't looking at Kernersville being a distribution uh, location, right? Which but is... we have a 1 million square foot um, Amazon distribution facility, and it's built on land that was planned for industrial development. Mm -hmm. And then um, Guilford County Schools was looking to expand and wanted to build a middle school and a high school in Guilford County, which Kernersville has land in Forsyth and Guilford both. Mm -hmm. And um, they were looking at that location and the, um, the Board of Aldermen turned their proposal down because mm -hmm. that was reserved for industrial commercial use. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So and I really like the way you phrased that a bit earlier about the, giving you the opportunity to really get to know residents in this public facing role in the, um, in the planning um, board. Um, what do you remember about decisions that you were making at, at, in that role in particular? Well, it was interesting because I remember um, a lot of excitement about a really innovative business coming to our community, which was a um, pharmacy with a drive up window. Because, you know, we take drive up windows for granted now. They've been essential during the pandemic. Definitely. But, um, it, but we didn't have any, and it was kind of a new idea. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember that being a lot of excitement. I remember um, a developer wanting to build apartments on an area that the planning board had a lot of concerns that maybe they weren't accounting for the um, 
I don't know how wet the property was, like mm -hmm. how, many, how much kind of uh, area that maybe was wetlands or mm -hmm. shouldn't be developed on. And the developer was kind of pushing the edge to that. And the planning board turned it down and the board of aldermen turned it down. And what happened later is a bank got built there and mm -hmm. sports fields. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I saw being on the planning board ideas that got um, turned down and then something good was developed there. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of um, experiences in that. And, um, you know, we developed, we um, did rezonings for neighborhoods. We did rezonings for a lot of different things, but not nearly the pace of development that Kernersville experienced later. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when you're thinking about, um, when you're looking back on your be uh, being in that role on the planning board mm -hmm. um, as something that was appointed, um, it, do you see how that might, do you see any skills that you gained there in addition to being the public facing role that served you in later roles? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, that is one of the reasons I ran for office because mm -hmm. the um, planning board had seen and recommended um, some developments that the Board of Aldermen then turned down. Mm -hmm. One of them was a medical facility that was going to be built on Maston Drive. Mm -hmm. Right now there's an apartment complex there, but it would have been built right behind the CVS mm -hmm. on Maston Drive, which in Kernersville, that's kind of near where Walmart is. Mm -hmm. um, and they were going to offer dialysis facilities, and it just seemed like a really good idea mm -hmm. uh, for Kernersville. But a lot of medical facilities at that time um, were not um, didn't pay property tax because mm -hmm. they're a nonprofit, and the board of aldermen turned it down on that basis. Mm -hmm. But I saw it as a great loss to the community because to have a a really robust community, you need to take care of the needs of the people who live here, which includes healthcare and schools and some nonprofits and churches and civic organizations and so not everything um, that a community has, you know, needs to be a corporation or a neighborhood or you need these, you need these things that improve your quality of life. So sure. I really supported it. The Board of Aldermen turned it down and that's one of the key reasons that I ran. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you first ran for Board of, um, board of Aldermen in what year? 2001. 2001. Um, so tell me about your thought process leading up to running, because you were in a, like a p appointed role before yes. on the planning board. And so now this is a different role in which you have to put forth a campaign of some sort. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so they actually advertised in the newspaper that the filing period was opening mm -hmm. in, um, in, in July. Mm -hmm. There was a notice in the newspaper that the filing was open for the municipal election. And I had been very involved in the planning board. Um, I served on that uh, committee, the Kernersville 2020 committee. Um, I served on the infrastructure subcommittee of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, you know, had been really involved in sharing information about and hearing people's opinions about these various zoning cases. I, t I would take off work early and go drive and look at the sites mm -hmm. and I would look at him early, but mm -hmm. then the day of the meeting, I left work at four o'clock. The meeting was at 730 and I would drive around and take one last look, get out and walk the properties. Mm -hmm. um, unless there were, you know, dogs mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or fences or For something sure. you couldn't handle. But, um, you know, I'd go out and try and see what I could on the ground and to be really prepared. And then, uh, you know, so I was really involved in kind of a lot of the things um, uh, that, that go into legislative decision making. Mm -hmm. And um, people were teasing me that I spent so much time um, working on this and it was, you know, an advisory opinion that the Board of Aldermen could just basically overturn or ignore. And um, that I ought to, like, if I was going to spend that much time on this mm -hmm. and if I was going to take it so seriously, I ought to be one of the final decision makers. Mm -hmm. And so um, I decided to, to file for office. So um, I came in and, and um, signed the papers and uh, paid my filing fee and, you know, was ready to go. But I ran an election where 11 people ran. They were running for five seats. Okay. The top five vote getters would be elected. Mm -hmm. One of the current aldermen had announced she was not running. She was running for mayor. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was a contested race for mayor and 11 people ran for these five seats. And so mm -hmm. four incumbents mm -hmm. were running for re-election. Mm -hmm. And um, I wouldn't have filed if the uh, one alderman had not announced she was running for mayor. Um, but I knew there'd be one seat that was kind of an open seat that incumbent wasn't filing for re-election, so I ran. And um, 
you know, it was it was a really interesting experience <laughs> because we didn't know a lot of people in Kernersville. You know, I'd met people um, through the chamber and that sort of thing, right. but some of the people in the election had um, just they were from here, their parents were from here, right. they had a, a, long, a large family network, um, they had a lot of roots in the community. One of the people who ran had a lot of experience um, and was well known in the community. And um, so, but I, um, I, we bought a digital camera and back then, yeah. a digital camera in 2001, very grainy, mm -hmm. um, very low tech compared to what we have. Any, any photo on your phone is better than that. But we took some digital pictures and we um, put them on a website. Mm -hmm. I created a website and um, it was really popular then. And I think it's still an effective way to campaign is um, we printed flyers. Mm -hmm. My husband and I printed flyers and I would give them to people I talked to. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the aldermen running that election was Brian Green, and that's what he did. He had these flyers, and he'd walk around. Every time he met someone, he'd give them this flyer. Mm -hmm. But we handed them out on election day, and I gave them to people. Um, I printed um, a mailer and did a mailer mm -hmm. through um, a commercial outfit. And um, let's see, what else did I do? I um, really worked on my message. Mm -hmm. I... Um, and I talked to some friends who were in this mom's. So I was president. I had been president of the Moms Club, okay. which is a group for kind of stay-at-home moms, mm -hmm. their kids. And so some of my friends that I had met through the Moms Club kind of helped me. They were my campaign committee. And mm -hmm. we talked about, like, how do people remember your name? How do, how do you get your message out? And so they had decided that what we need is a really good pen mm -hmm. because waitresses use a pen. Um people in the community use a pen. And so I had, um, I decided that my colors would be orange and blue. Mm -hmm. And so I printed up these um, orange and blue pens and they were like, if we had a t-shirt, we could wear a t-shirt around, people would start to know your name. And so we printed up t-shirts and mm -hmm. wore these t-shirts everywhere and I had these flyers. And so I had um, the mailer I mailed out, the mm -hmm. website, the um, t-shirts, the pens and, and a message. And my message was, I sat down and really thought about my values that I had developed for the community through my experiences on the planning board and um, my experiences as an attorney mm -hmm. and um, kind of that optimism and belief in our nation that I, was one of the reasons you know, I went to law school sure. is that that optimism and belief in laws and, and society. And so I um, thought about my message, low taxes, better roads, mm -hmm. Um, quality of life, economic development, and looking out for the farmers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just kind of the values of our community, the small town atmosphere we enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, campaigned on that and um, was not the favorite, but I was elected. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the, the things that was key is just how um, hard we worked. Mm -hmm. Like I walked around neighborhoods, went door to door, introduced myself. Um, gave everyone a pen. It would have worked just as well probably to give them a business card. The mayor at the time that won was Larry Brown and he had, I had talked to him like, mm -hmm. how do you campaign? Mm -hmm. And he'd walk the neighborhoods and given out his business card. And mm -hmm. so I walked the neighborhoods, talked to people, gave them a pen, talked to them. Um, and then we had um, a Halloween festival. Mm -hmm. And so I um, went to the Halloween festival. I got invited to be at, um, the law offices of John Barrow, um, and so he, who is on Mountain Street, and so I was at his office, and I was like, "Well, what can I do at Halloween that's really, you know, impactful?" Mm -hmm. And you know, keep in mind at this point in time, I'm a mom, and I have two children now. I've got right. John, and I've got Matthew, <laughs> so I'm home like taking care of them for sure, um, kind of folding laundry, thinking about, okay, what can I do that like gets my name out there, mm -hmm. and um, you know, what do my children like? And so I decided to try helium balloons. Mm -hmm. And so we bought these orange helium balloons that mm -hmm. were printed with my name, um, you know, vote Dawn Morgan, low taxes, better roads, sure. and got some friends to help us and blew up these orange helium balloons mm -hmm. and um, handed them out at Halloween. And mm -hmm. just like that one last chance to mm -hmm. kind of deliver my message mm -hmm. and to really think about, you know, kind of as a mom, like what does the what is interesting to people in the community, mm -hmm. you know, a pen, 
you know, a way to remember your name if they like you, but they can't remember your name when they go vote. That doesn't help. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of get the word out there mm -hmm. um, about me and my message. And it was very well received. On election day, I met people who I had not met, who I'd heard of in the community. They were mm -hmm. prominent people in the community who I met them and they said that they had voted for me. And just really kind of warms your heart that you could get your um, message out there and, mm -hmm. and have that support from people you don't even know. Mm -hmm. The Kernersville News ran a series of candidate questions that election. They always do. Mm -hmm. And so I had participated and answered these questions. And, mm -hmm. you know, so people had had a chance to get the paper mm -hmm. and um, look at it and say, out of these 11 candidates, who do I want to vote for? Mm -hmm. um, with a like a little more in depth than just name recognition mm -hmm. about like kind of what you stand for and what right. you bring. Yeah, it's kind of a long-winded answer. No, but it's <laughs> but, a, it's it's a good in-depth answer of this, the different ways you're trying to market yourself as a candidate, um, which is crucial information when we're talking about running in this kind of sphere, as well as the different things that you're juggling at this time, um, especially like being a mom, which is you're the most important thing to their, your kid's life at that point. You're trying to make sure that they're able to grow up safe and all of that, as well as trying to put together a message and work with your mom's group and talk to people to give you advice. You talked to the current mayor at the time mm -hmm. who, um, and the mother's group. Any other people you were talking about trying to get advice as far as campaigning? Well, aldermen, you know, the other people running, I mm -hmm. talked to, to them, mm -hmm. especially the people who had been serving. Yeah, the other incumbents and so. stuff. And then and then you won, I did. Which, which is exciting. I did. <laughs> I won by 12 votes. <laughs> I did. So, you know, when I tell people in a local election you should vote yeah. and that one vote matters, yeah. one vote matters. Absolutely. There have been some local elections in um, Forsyth County or across the state that um, it's one vote mm -hmm. has decided it. Sometimes there's a tie. And what they do is maybe they go to the Board of Elections and draw straws or pick a number. Right. I mean, it. It can be very, very close. And you think about that, the one person who like decided they didn't want to go vote that day. Right. And, you know, it makes all the difference. So yep. one vote matters in a local election. And I think that you ought to view uh, state and um, national elections the same way. Mm -hmm. Your vote could be the vote that, that matters. Absolutely. That makes the difference. Absolutely. Every vote does matter, especially when, within a democracy that mm -hmm. is going that way. Absolutely. But I think it's important to have a message. There's some people who run who say, oh, I just want to serve. But, you know, that's, that's not very compelling. Tell me what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you believe in, you know, where you stand mm -hmm. and, you know, have a message when you run, because that is your platform for mm -hmm. what you do when you're elected. Mm -hmm. So if, if you, if you have a message that you're campaigning on mm -hmm. and people elect you on that message, then it, you know, it's full speed ahead to accomplish these goals for the community. Mm -hmm not just how that you want to serve, but that how will you serve and do the direct action that comes from that. Yeah. You'd asked me had I thought about running for office. Right. I had never expected you know, to run for office. I had just gotten really involved in the community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then what, what's exciting about this portion, I've had talked to a couple of people where it was really just their first election, but you've been involved with the planning board. So it's not like being on the board of aldermen was that new of a situation for you. It, it, you had kind of been prepped in this way, but it's also a different role. <laughs> what do you remember learning from being on the alderman's board at that point? Okay. So, um, you know, I learned you just got, you have to listen a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you want to say something on every issue, mm -hmm. but it's really important to kind of listen. And I really tried to build my credibility by, by listening. And when I, when I did something, I wanted to be, have it well thought out mm -hmm. and have researched it before. So I listened a lot and I spent a lot of time, um, on the, the phone with the, um, with the other aldermen. Mm -hmm. The town was in the middle of some lawsuits at that point in time and there were some big issues in the community and a lot of things, personnel issues or the lawsuits, had been discussed in closed session. Mm -hmm. So even though I had been involved in the campaign and prior to that involved in the planning board mm -hmm. and attended board alderman meetings, there was a lot of information I just didn't have because it wasn't public. Right. And so I spent a lot of time um, you know, talking to them. And, and I wanted to share with you that going back to being a mom, mm -hmm. you know, I would be walking around trying to get Matthew to fall asleep and like rubbing his back 
and had a cordless phone. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents had said, you need a cordless phone, so they'd give me a cordless phone. Um, and so I had the cordless phone on you know, one ear and, then and him on the <laughs> other. And so I would just keep my voice really calm and listen and walk around and then you know, lay him down. So um, uh, you know, I remember talking to our, our now town, man town manager, mm -hmm. uh, Curtis Swisher, served with uh, me as an elected official, and I'd remember it was he worked at S and R Motors, his family business, and it was pretty easy to get to talk to him after five o'clock. Mm -hmm. So it's like five fifteen, five thirty. I'd talk to Curtis about something, and you know, it always seemed like a really good time to talk him, to him when I was like doing something like cooking bacon or mm -hmm. something like that. So I just like flip the bacon and talk to Curtis <laughs> and turn the bacon down and let it cook a little longer because I needed to talk to him mm -hmm. and I needed to take the bacon off, but right. like. And uh, my family was like, this bacon is great. <laughs> it's just perfectly crunchy. That's what my secret is. I'm working on politics and, and being a mom at the same time. Right. So, um, you know, so, you know, every now and then you'd have kind of a Cinderella moment where you're like, yeah, I guess I'll just mop the floor. And then someone calls you and you put the mop down. And you're like, okay, let's talk about this road. <laughs> so, um, it's such an interesting image, though, that, that stands out as well, of just like the baby and the phone at the same time, and then the bacon and then the phone at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah, and I don't think anyone had any idea because you know my you know I'm just trying to be effective right and, you know um, business like and all that so I think you know sometimes you can talk yourself out of doing something that you can do mm -hmm. because of the other limitations in your life but you know sometimes you just have to kind of go for it absolutely So I think you know encouragement to other women mm -hmm. when they're trying to juggle all of these things it can be hard but you know sometimes you know, you're strong, you're a woman, yeah. so juggle it. Absolutely. <laughs> do it. But you know, it's, it's great to have like good family support mm -hmm. and um, community support as well. But, um, you know, sometimes, it, I, you know, in a way, in all of this, I've been a pioneer. Um, there's been other females who ran for office, but I'm the first female to be elected mayor in Kernersville. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, that's been a great honor mm -hmm. and, you know, great responsibility at the same time. Absolutely. We will, we will get to that portion. Okay. We're getting a little bit ahead, but because I, I, I want to spend more time with the Board of Aldermen because they have a, quite a bit of power as it is in terms of the way you're describing the planning board. And sure, you're the final vote. I mean, yeah. And on roads, on um, zoning, on the direction of the town. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and one of the things I, I did is when I was campaigning, I went to the Kernersville News and I said to the editor, who's passed away now, but his name's John Staples, I said, um, you know, I want to let you know I'm running for the Board of Aldermen and, you know, I'd like your support. And his first response was, well, that's too bad. Hmm? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he made a lot of jokes, but he, 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 would, he would tease people. He made a lot of jokes. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, that's too bad. And I was like, why? I was like, well, he, well he, I got to pick myself up off the floor. Right. I was like, why? Um, you know, do you think I would like not bring a lot to? He's like, oh, no, you'd be a fine alderman. He's like, I was wanting to you to write for the paper. <laughs> and, so, I was like, and I can't, if you're running for office, you mm. can't write for the paper. Right. And I was like, okay. And so I got elected. And in December, um, after the election, mm -hmm. I... Um, Wrote a, wrote a column, and I called it Our Town. And um, I contacted the editor, John Staples, and said, all right, I've been elected now. Can mm. I write for the paper? <laughs> and so I sent him um, columns, and they started publishing them. Finally, we agreed on uh, Tuesday, so I had a regular Tuesday column after that. But, um, but the day I went there to talk to him, I met the um, publisher of the paper, John Owens Bay. Mm. And, you know, just in the campaign process, I just met a lot of people in the community. And mm -hmm. people always say how you campaign is how you'll serve. Mm -hmm. So, and I do think, at least in local elections, that really is true. The energy people put into their campaign kind of reflects the energy they put into serving mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Um, so, and how do, you, how do you think you started, um, tell me about these columns, actually, because I, I hadn't heard about those when I was doing a bit of research. How, okay. How, yeah, tell me about the columns. Well, so what I found is at the board, and this relates to my service at the Board of Aldermen. So right. at the Board of Aldermen meeting, sometimes really interesting things, at least I found them interesting, would happen, and they just wouldn't pick up as being newsworthy. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't get reported on. Like... I don't know, just any number of issues. Sure. Whether it's something that brings a tear to your eye or um, something that is setting the groundwork for the future or something that, um, and maybe, maybe being an attorney made me view things a little differently because sometimes I would feel like 
there would be something that was related over the course of several meetings. And mm -hmm. so I would kind of put the ideas together mm -hmm. and then put them in a newspaper column mm -hmm. like, um, you know, if if we're if we're in leaf season, mm -hmm. I talk about the decision made in March to buy the extra leaf trucks. Mm -hmm. Or if we're getting ready for a winter storm, I talk about the decision in August to have more, you know, salt spray available, or how that salt spray works, or why it didn't work this time because mm -hmm. the rain washed it away, or just kind of explain some of these things. Um, you know, why aren't you fixing that road? Well, it's got this alligator cracking. Well, the alligator cracking means the subsurface of the road is bad, so you've got to dig the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. It's time consuming, expensive, and you know, it's not as easy as just putting a coat of asphalt on. Mm -hmm. So kind of all of these like things I was learning mm -hmm. about the infrastructure of a town or our plans or how Kernersville kind of fit into other things going on in the world, I'd write about in the, mm -hmm. the column. Mm -hmm. like. Your question at the beginning about what is a planning board, sure. that was one of my first columns. That was like my third one. Sure. And it really was the one where everyone got super interested because mm -hmm. I had explained mm -hmm. what the planning board was and why it's important mm -hmm. and written that in, you know, 600 words and published in the paper. Sure. So, um, but it, so it's just a way to like share things that I thought were exciting. Yeah. And every now and then to share something that's kind of controversial and like maybe my, my point of view on it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but I don't know, just new businesses in the community or exciting developments or things that we were doing now that would have an impact in the future, maybe in two to four years, and just kind of giving people a heads up, hey, mm -hmm. this is coming in mm -hmm. the community. Yeah. Or we're having a planning process for a new library. You know, the meetings are at this point in time. You know, can you come join us? Mm -hmm. And just information for the community that really was positive because my point of view is positive and like, let's get something done for our community. Right. What can we do next? What's, what's the next adventure? Mm -hmm. What can we accomplish that makes life better in Kernersville? What's interesting to me about your tenure here in Kernersville is the changes that you can see in terms of just the way Kernersville has changed over that time. But the thing that made me, when you were talking about the column, is that's very easily how you could then just switch around and doing social media as well. But because social media is not really a thing in like 2001, 2002, that this is just the next way to do that. It's just another way to communicate with residents. Mm -hmm. It was directly yeah. you know, communicating with residents. Absolutely. Um, so, and then how long are you on the board of aldermen? So I, I was reelected um, in 2003, mm -hmm. 2005, mm -hmm. and 2007. Right. And so then in um, January of um, 2008, we had had a vacancy in the office of um, the town manager. Mm -hmm. And in January 2008, we hired Curtis Swisher, who mm -hmm. was our current mayor mm -hmm. at the time, to be the town manager. Mm -hmm. So under North Carolina law, you can't be the town manager and the mayor both. Right. So he resigned from being the mayor. Sure. And so we had a meeting um, towards the end of January, and the board, okay, so we operate under a charter. Okay. So the charter is issued by the state of North Carolina. And our charter says if you have a vacancy during the term, so keep in mind we run every two years. Right. So you don't have like a new election. If you have a vacancy, then the alderman appoint someone to fill the vacancy. Mm -hmm. And so the alderman um, voted to um, elect me to be mayor. Mm -hmm. So Curtis, the board of aldermen hired Curtis to be the town manager. Right. After he resigned. Mm -hmm or hired him and then he resigned. Yes. And so then um, I was um, elected to be mayor mm -hmm. and the first female mayor of Kernersville. Did you know that at that point? Um, you... They asked me if, if we, well, they asked me, one of the aldermen asked me, um, who do you think should we should appoint as mayor? And I was ready. I had a list of like three people I thought would be great, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, including the woman who had run and not been elected. You know, she was on the list. Sure. And. Uh, and the, the alderman was like, no, Don, we, we want to elect you, <laughs> but would you be willing to do it? Now, keep in mind, at this point in time, I had three children. Right. I had my daughter. Right. Um, so my daughter um, was not in school yet. Mm -hmm. And so she was very young. And so I was like, well, let me, let me think about this, because being mayor is a lot more time consuming. There's a lot more that goes on during the day. Mm -hmm. The alderman, you know, I could do a lot on the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, I could put my kids in the car and drive around to these um, zoning sites, you know, I could, um, 
you know, have the meetings at night, but there's a lot more that goes on during the day. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, by this point in time, my mom and dad had moved to Kerner, so they had lived in the Washington, D.C. area. And so I talked to my mom, and um, she was like, oh, more babysitting. <laughs> so she was supportive <laughs> of it. And I was like, well, you know, if you can help me with Sarah, mm -hmm. then I can do this. And so um, I said I would do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I was elected by the board. And so my first term, mm. I spent a lot of time explaining how Curtis was no longer the mayor and I, I was the mayor and how that had happened. <laughs> right. and, and, you know, the kind of the transition there. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed it because it was a good opportunity. I'd been to schools and spoken to schools school children, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. but to be even kind of more at the forefront of Kernersville, mm -hmm. visiting schools and being involved in um, development decisions and being in some of these meetings that the mayor goes to mm -hmm. that the aldermen are not in, um, like if there's a new economic idea or, or that kind of thing that you go to representing mm -hmm. your community. But um, the big change is you can't vote mm -hmm. in Kernersville. You know, it's different in different communities. It sure. depends on your charter. Right. But in Kernersville, the aldermen vote. And the mayor does not. Oh, okay. The mayor only votes in the case of a tie. Mm -hmm. And so to, to not be able to vote on a zoning case was a big change for me. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that, that's an interesting shift to just sort of find yourself in. You, you have all these other responsibilities that you have as mayor as well, but you can't, unless there's a tie, you can't, you can't be um, involved in that part of the process. And people say, you know, use your influence and all that. Yeah. And, you know, you have your opinions. And you can do what you can, but it's not your vote. <laughs> it's not your vote. It's up to the aldermen. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, so people would say, like, I agree with you, be sure to talk to your talk alderman. To your alderman. <laughs> or people would say something, I'm like, well, you know, that's an interesting point of view, but, you know. You know <laughs> Unless there's a tie, I can't. Do you need contact information for the alderman? I mean, you need me to give you a phone number. What is, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, that's a that's that's a, a different shift to have because you were you you ran to be part of the Alder Board of Aldermen to have this to be a part of this additional process and be able to vote for these several other years and you're getting the hang of that and really able to manage that in addition to having a great support structure with your family and everything and then you're appointed to mayor which is exciting. Um, and then uh, to find out um, the the shift in responsibility is. is is interesting. Yeah. Can't vote. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any, uh, were there any other surprises as the mayor at that point though, when you, when you got to that? Like, well, you probably knew they couldn't vote, but you, um, you still took it. Oh, oh sure. Right. Yeah. Yes. But it's a different responsibility yes. to be in that position. Well, I enjoy it because you, mm -hmm. um, you know, I knew Curtis. He right. had been an alderman while I was an alderman. Mm -hmm. He'd been the mayor when I was an alderman. So I'd worked with him. Um, you know, since 2001 mm -hmm. on town issues, felt like I worked well with him. And so the mayor and the town manager work closely together. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'd have a lot of meetings, Curtis and I, and we'd like plan out things and we would um, and still do plan the agenda and the meetings. And I liked the, and I still enjoy kind of the intellectual challenge of, you know, trying to have a meeting that runs effectively and efficiently and gets the town's business done. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how prepared people are when they walk into the meeting, the town staff matters and um, the order of your agenda matters mm -hmm. and just making sure people are, I don't know, aware of and ready mm -hmm. to, to vote. Mm -hmm. To do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's really exciting while I uh, have served is we've um, moved to and, you know, I mean, I guess everybody's doing it now, but we moved to um, stop having paper copies of everything and instead publish our information um, for the agenda mm -hmm. um, on our website. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really good because people can get access to the information about a zoning case over the weekend. When I was on the planning board and as an alderman, people calling, I saw the zoning sign, you know, and it's 530 that they're calling me. So town hall shut. Right. And there's no getting the information. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the information I had and I would share with them, mm -hmm. but if I didn't have it, then you couldn't get it right. until Monday morning. And then the meeting would be Tuesday, mm -hmm. or if it's planning board, Monday night. 
so people would find out about things like right before the vote was going to be <laughs> taking place and they couldn't get the details. Mm -hmm. So when we put the agenda information online, then it's accessible over the weekend. So that was a huge improvement. I want to, to zero in again about you being a mom during all of this, because that, that takes a lot of time and effort in terms of being able to raise these kids. You've got mm -hmm. a great support network as well. Your parents moved from DC here during when you were in, um, when you were first being the mayor. Did they move already? They had just gotten there. They had just gotten mm -hmm. there. So I'm just curious about the fact that you're, um, I, I, I think there's an interesting story of the fact that you are the first woman mayor of Kernersville not too long after you just had your daughter and see, and her seeing you grow up in this space <laughs> as well. Like, how, what does she think about it? Oh, she's very excited about it. She was, <laughs> she's turned 18 now, so she helped me um, <clears throat> this fall with my campaign, and she's very excited about it. What's interesting is, um, we were talking about you know the 19th Amendment, sure. And so she decided to do that as one of her school projects mm -hmm. in high school. And in the course of it, she interviewed a female elected official. So she interviewed Gloria Wisenhut, mm -hmm. who's a county commissioner, mm -hmm. and she did some research um, with kind of early historical documents at the uh, library in downtown Winston Salem, the mm -hmm. main branch of the library, and the. Uh, I was in the research room, and so the librarians were really helpful to her, helping find some information. But she found this research and um, um, kind of some like old history, like contemporaneous mm -hmm. with the time period. And I was in the research room with her, reading some of it, and it was just fascinating, you know, that um, some of the arguments against women having the right to vote were that they would just vote how the men would vote. And so you just have twice as many votes, but it was the same outcome. And, you know, just kind of the, the physical struggles that women were willing to endure to get the word out about voting and, and being imprisoned and being mistreated and just that personal sacrifice. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, golly, you know, it just is an incredible, incredible um, story. The other thing I wanted to go back to as well though is because um, you were appointed to the mayor first and then you had to campaign after that. Yes. Um, so tell me about like your future campaign, your, your campaigns post being appointed because I there, there's got there's there's definitely things that you would have learned from when you were running as an alderman versus when you were running for the mayor. So my first election I was not opposed. Mm -hmm. So um, what I did that election is I tried to make sure that the people running knew about local government, mm -hmm. knew about the services the town was providing, and I worked with the town manager to like, we had a meeting where everyone who was campaigning was invited to, and um, a packet of information. Um, so like when I had run, none of this had been provided to me. I had to find it all. Right. And so just that idea of like educating the people who were running for office so they would um, kind of know what some of the the real problems were that local government um, was involved in. So they were, I don't know, not saying things that maybe they would learn more about later and mm. then kind of like, well, I didn't realize we did this or we were constrained by that. So that they were better informed as they campaigned. So mm. the first election, I, I did that. Um, and I just tried to keep you know the town running well, despite the fact there was a campaign going on. Sure. Um, you know, you see a lot of like extra people come to meetings right. and want to say something controversial or whatever because mm -hmm. they're you know trying to get their name out there. Right. So just trying to keep you know good government going and keep the town running well and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So the first election I wasn't um, opposed. Mm -hmm. um, then I've been opposed three times since then, mm -hmm. and so just going back and. Um, and thinking about you know my message mm -hmm. and and um, you know and what I want to accomplish for the community. The tax rate's important because it affects um, your economic opportunities as a community. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are on fixed income, so the taxes they pay needs to cover good quality services. But you know it takes away from income they could use for other things in their life. Mm -hmm. um, having good roads is essential for your community, and often you're playing catch up to development. Um, roads are really expensive and they you just get one bad winter and it does you know so much damage to your roads so mm -hmm. they're you're always playing catch up on roads but the goal of having good roads you know helps you to try and stay out ahead of that yeah. um, you know the economic development in Kernersville has exceeded you know 
the wildest dreams of this community. I mean, right. We've got this hospital that's wonderful, mm -hmm. um, you know, the VA Healthcare Center, the Amazon, FedEx, you know, a really good business park community. And um, expansions of our longtime businesses like Dear Hitachi, expansions mm -hmm. of Grass America, mm -hmm. um, retaining businesses. I've been in meetings where businesses were considering moving to another country mm -hmm. to do business and they decide to stay in North Carolina and they decide to stay in Kernersville. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the opportunities that having all that business activity creates in the community, the commercial development, right. which has expanded. When I first ran, we did not have Target, we did not have Walmart. Um, and having all of this going, having all this going on in the community creates opportunity for the people to live here. It's more convenient for healthcare mm -hmm. services, it's more convenient more job opportunities, um, more places to shop, more places to live. It's mm -hmm. just good all around. Absolutely. As a female politician, is it important for you to be considered likable? Has that ever come up at any point in your campaigns or runnings or roles? Well, what's interesting is in this, um, in it, you know, people say they like someone who's running for the Board of Aldermen or they like someone who's running for mayor, but who they want to elect is someone who's effective, who mm -hmm. has the experience, mm -hmm. who can get the job done for the citizen. Would you say you've been a mentor to any aspiring politicians in Kernersville? I feel like I've been a mentor to um, some of the some of the teenagers in Kernersville, mm -hmm. you know, as they've grown up and yeah. gotten into their careers, if they've been interested in local government. Um, and. I've been a mentor to anybody who's asked for help. It doesn't matter their age or if they're male or female. Sure. If they've got questions and an interest, I'll do what I can to help them. Absolutely. And I feel like one of the things that's been important in being involved in the schools, and I feel like of all the mayors of, of Kernersville, I've been the most involved in the schools. Mm -hmm. Because as a mom, I was a school volunteer sure. for my children's classes. But I've also gone and you know read a book or mm -hmm talked about local government or talked about being a community helper or um, I've been at the career day mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Um, everything from preschool to going back to my um, uh, university, Wake Forest University where I went to law school sure. and speaking at the law school. That's exciting. Um, so, but I, but I tell the children in schools and um, you know, I tell them Girls can be mayors, or boys can be mayors. You know, a mom can be a mayor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so just to like let them know that they can whatever they aspire to, they can they can dream to attain. And just that idea, I mean, that a girl can be a mayor. Mm -hmm. You know, I think is kind of a big idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, what do you think are some of your favorite accomplishments as a politician in Kernersville? Well. It was very exciting to help open the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so the groundbreaking was in 2008. Mm -hmm. I had just become mayor. Um, I had been involved in the political process for the hospital. A hospital cannot open in North Carolina unless they've been granted a certificate of need. Mm -hmm. And so there was a huge community effort to get community support for a hospital. Lots of postcards were sent in. There was a certificate of need public hearing and I was one of the speakers at it to the state regulators. And so I had been involved in the process of trying to get the rec you know, approval for the hospital, writing a letter of reference, and that kind of thing, everything for it. Mm -hmm. And so um, to be at the groundbreaking, and it was a rainy day, so they'd set up this enormous tent. Mm -hmm. And they had all these tables, and they had physicians and surgeons and um, hospital administrators and people who are leaders in the community and, and everybody there. And you know, I was really, I was new at this. You know, I was very new at this. I was working really hard on my remarks. So I was like, you know, I need just a few more minutes to, to polish them up a little more. And mm -hmm. so I got there, and there's this, there's like, I don't know, maybe 13 news cameras mm -hmm. and all these photographers. Mm -hmm. And it was like everything you see, um, yeah. you know, um, like people chasing like, you know, Hollywood stars around or whatever. But this whole row of cameras and, um, everything and I was like one thing that I was nervous about was being in front of a TV camera mm -hmm. you know so I could write for the newspaper all day long but being in front of a TV news camera I wasn't too so sure about sure. so I get there and it's just this huge 
media event too. And but I look out and there's these surgeons, and some of which had um, helped family members of mine. Mm-hmm. And you know, just so grateful for what they did, and and to think about what the hospital would bring for our community. And so you know, it's like pouring rain. There's like a river running through the um, under the tent. There's like a river running through the event, and and up there speaking about the hospital, but, you know, just that honor to represent Kernersville in that moment mm-hmm. in history, it was so important that a hospital was coming to our community. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed um, helping open the fire station. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a groundbreaking for the fire station. I got to speak at that as mayor, spoke at the um, ribbon cutting for it. Mm-hmm. Um, earlier, um, Kernersville went from having a fire department to a fire rescue department. We got heavy duty rescue certified by the state, something which I had been an advocate for Mm -hmm. and speaking at at that um, celebration where we renamed the fire department, Mm -hmm. um, the opening of our new public services building. Mm -hmm. um, We redid the uh, police department, renamed it uh, the Stockton Law Enforcement Center. So speaking at that event. because speaking at these events is kind of the culmination of all the planning and the advocacy for making it happen. Mm -hmm. Reason for these oral interviews is for Mm -hmm. the commemoration of the 19th Amendment, Mm -hmm. um, which allowed women to vote. um, That has been existing in the United States for about 100 years. I think it's. Re- I think there's a lot of interesting things to sort of bring up for people who have been in a political office and reflecting back on what that history meant. And we've talked a little bit about that so far, but I've had a couple direct ones I wanted to mm-hmm. just sort of bring up. Do you remember your first vote? I remember voting in the school cafeteria in a mock election in <laughs> high school. Sometimes I, um, I think about some of the things that um, you know we take for granted in this country and. Um, the right to vote is something that a lot of people take for granted Mm -hmm. and you know it's important because your vote if if you have a local election and a vote can be decided by one vote Mm -hmm. so that person that got elected by your vote has the final say on whether or not land is rezoned for a medical facility Mm -hmm. or it becomes an apartment complex or that we're going to have um, you know, certain services provided Mm -hmm. in our community or not, or we're going to build that fire station or not. Mm -hmm. You know, a single vote is a powerful thing, so the right to vote is is very precious. Mm -hmm. That's the last question I have. Thank you very much for your time and your um, flexibility with the schedule. I really appreciate it.